Welcome to the next uh, video lecture for Introduction to Machine Learning. Um, now we're going to start talking about regression specifically. Um, and the first thing we'll look at in this context is uh, possible loss functions for regression. Okay, so um, first loss function for regression that we'll look at is the squared error loss, um, L2 loss. L2, um, <clears throat> because we're looking at the squared um, distances. Yeah. Um, so well, how is this loss function defined? Well, we just take the difference between the true target variable y and um, our model prediction f of x. Sometimes we also call that y hat. Yeah, And then we square this difference. Um, in many textbooks, you also find um, a 0.5 here in front of it. It doesn't really matter. It makes things slightly easier sometimes, um, having that this factor of 0.5 here. Um, it's clear that since we're only the using the loss function to rank different models, to compare different models, um, whether there's a factor here or not, doesn't really depend on which model will turn out to be the best yeah um, all right so what are the properties of that loss function yeah we said earlier that um, the properties of the loss function determine um, how hard or easy it is to actually find the minimum of the empirical risk surface yeah so in this case uh, this is good it's a convex function so it only has one global minimum and co convex functions are fairly easy to, uh, to, to optimize for that reason. It's also differentiable. Yeah, we can take derivatives. Um, so we can f compute a gradient in order to use a gradient for minimization. Yeah? And specifically here, and that's also the reason for this factor of 0.15, if you look at the derivative of this loss function, so these symbols, these squiggly a's they're they're used to de de denote derivatives in higher dimensional spaces but for now you can just think of this as basically being like a little d so we're just taking the derivative here that's all this means we're taking the derivative of this expression with regard to f of x so this is a very simple quadratic thing yeah, so, and that's also the reason for that factor here. If we have that factor here and we take the derivative, so that's two times 0.5. Yeah, okay, well, that just disappears. So we have y minus f of x. Um, okay, and uh, well, that's it. That's our derivative. Yeah, um, that's all we have to do basically here. So our derivative is the residual. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now, what are the properties of that loss function? Um, what's clear is by squaring the distance between uh, y and f of x, we're putting a fairly large emphasis on avoiding very large errors because very large errors will become humongous if we square them. So they will play um, a very large role in terms of, um, you know, we, we want to avoid those desperately so that we can minimize our loss, okay? So if you have very, if you have outliers in your target variable that just cannot be explained very well by the model, then these will affect your results fairly heavily, yeah? So it's not very resistant to outliers, okay. And a second important part, uh, property of the squared error loss is that it has very, very close connections to the Gaussian distribution or normal distribution. Um, we'll talk about that later. Okay, visually, how does the loss function look like? Well, let's see, these are the residuals, uh, epsilon minus four to four here. Um, and the loss function is just a parabola over these residuals. Um, if you think about, um, for example, a, a linear model, say, uh, where we have uh, here, the, the model is basically the line, that's our f of x, and we have our observation y given by 
these dots here. Now, if we look at the, the squared error loss, what does it mean? Well, basically we take the distance between y in this 10, five and the model prediction for that specific x, which would be about 2.4 maybe or something like that. Um, <clears throat> all right, and then we take the squared error loss. So basically you can think of it this as an area of a square where the side length are basically the distance. Yeah, so immediately you can see that, um, well, for big deviations, this becomes a fairly large area. So squared error loss, yeah. For this uh, fairly small deviation of about one, well, the area of the square is only about one. Okay, yeah, so this is what we see here. Um, all right. Now, um, one interesting aspect you could ask is what's the optimal constant prediction? So if, we, if we're using the simplest model that you could ever think of, where f of x is just one constant value, so it's not actually a function of the inputs x, it always gives you back the same value, so the same prediction for all x's. What under squared error loss would be the optimal model? Yeah, so now this is the first time in this class that we're actually doing empirical risk minimization. So our hypothesis class now is the set of all constant functions. And we're trying to find the constant function, the value of that constant function, C, yeah, which minimizes the empirical risk. So we're looking for that value of C, which minimizes the empirical risk. The empirical risk, for squared error loss is just the sum of squared distances between the actual observed values and our model prediction, which in this case is just C. Yeah? So if we do it like that, what do we get out? Well, um, the first thing is we can take derivative of that yeah? um, and set it to zero. So that's... Um, <clears throat> so that's just um, doing it like this. Yeah. Take the derivative. The derivative is very easy. We can take the derivative inside the sum. So here we have two times yi minus c. There's another uh, minus here because we have to then differentiate the minus c once again. But okay, we don't really care. Um, now we set this derivative to zero multiplied by minus one, two, so that the minus disappears again, then we have this. And now we just solve for C. And if we do that, well, turns out we end up with uh, the average of the Y's. Yeah, so the value that minimizes the squared error loss over all our observations is to just always predict the arith arithmetic mean. Of the target variables, yeah, that's uh, that's the optimal solution under squared error loss. Okay, um, now if that seems mysterious to you, pause the video for a minute and just really do that derivation and see if you can um, arrive at the same result. Yeah, so fairly easy, uh, but it's a good way to um, get acquainted with that kind of thing. All right, um, alternative loss function is the absolute error loss. So we don't square the distance, we just take its absolute value. Yeah, why do we take its absolute value? Because the loss function always has to return a positive value and it should return zero if our prediction is exactly correct. Yeah, um, so we can ensure that by just taking the absolute value of that. This is convex again, which is good. Uh, what's not so good is that for zero, the absolute function has a kink, right? Because the, the, the absolute value function looks like this. It's linear for negative values, linear decreasing, and it's linear increasing for positive values. But here, in, in, in spe specifically at the minimum, which we really care about, there is no derivative. Yeah. Because if you come from that side, the derivative is always minus one. Uh, and if you come from that side, the derivative is always 1, but here it's not defined, because that's a kink. Mm. So that makes optimization kind of harder. 
Um, and if you ask the same question um, as for the squared error loss that we did before, what's the optimal constant prediction under absolute error? The answer is, well, it's not the arithmetic mean anymore. It's the median of the target variables, which uh, is the optimal choice of constant prediction if you use the absolute error as your loss metric. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is much more robust to outliers in Y because, well, the loss only increases linearly in the size of the error, not quadratic as for the quadratic loss. Okay, duh. <laughs> All right, um, that's it for uh, this first chapter. Short introduction to possible regression losses. Thank you for listening.